In this lesson, you'll learn four ways to make your scales sound like music when you jam. Hi, I'm John with the Blues Guitar Institute, and this is your Tuesday Blues, where we take cool acoustic blues concepts and we break them down into small bite-sized chunks so that you can get this stuff into your playing as fast as possible. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. We're going to talk about something that really troubles a lot of guitarists, and that is we spend hours and hours practicing our scales, and then when we go to jam, we sound like we're practicing our scales. Well, in this video, I'm going to give you four different ways that you can really take a lick and tweak it in each of these four different ways and make things sound a whole lot more musical. All right, before we dig into things though, hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss a lesson. They come out every single Tuesday and go ahead and hit that bell notification icon. All right, to get started, we're going to take a basic lick that comes right out of the A major pentatonic scale. Let's give this thing a listen and I'll come back and give you the first way that we can tweak this to sound more musical. Now you'll notice in the first example we played right on the eighth beat. So we played on the one and two and three and four and we played almost every single one of those. So the first thing that you can do is alter the timing. And what I mean by that is give some space. Don't play every single beat and sub beat here. What you can do is kind of let this breathe a little bit. And that brings us to figure two, which is an example of altering the timing. We're going to leave some notes out. We're going to shift the timing around a little bit. And you'll be surprised at just how much this one little tweak gets you. Okay, hear how that definitely had a lot of the same notes. So we're still working from the A major pentatonic scale as our bass line here, but we changed the timing pretty dramatically here. So instead of just kind of walking up the notes and then back down like we did in the first figure, what we did here in figure two is we sort of accelerated things a little bit. What I mean by that is in this first part of the measure, we did this cool little hammer on and pull off. It's really the same notes that we worked on in the first figure. But instead of spelling them out on top of each eighth beat, we did this. That little tweak gives it that much more life. And then we ended with a triplet. And the cool thing is that when we hit this high A here on the first string, that we hit it on the and of four. And so really, we're hitting that before beat one of the next measure. So we kind of pulled this note forward in time. And then we simply walked back down to our root using this. So we pulled off with a quick little pull off here from the F sharp down to the E. Then we hit our major third here, the C sharp on the third string on our way to the root. So you can tell there's definitely similar content to that very scalar example that we covered at the beginning, but we've really jazzed things up just a little bit. Now let's talk about the second way that you can make your scale sound more musical, and that is by using passing tones. I'll play through figure three here, and then I'll come back and talk to you a little bit about how to use passing tones. Here we go. So a passing tone is really any note that is outside of the scale that you're working in. And it's not going to sound great if you hang on that passing tone, at least not typically, but they work great to add some color to your playing. And what we're going to do is really encounter our first passing tone here at the very beginning of this phrase. So if you're looking at figure three here, what we're going to do is hit the one, which is our bass, the and of one is our root here and then we jump back and hit the second the minor set or the major second here which is in the scale the a major pentatonic scale but then we're going to hammer on quickly to the minor third which is not in the scale so this is our passing tone then we're going to um, walk up to the major third which is in 
the scale. So we've got this passing tone nestled right here in between the second and the third degree of our A major pentatonic scale. And hear how that adds just a little bit of color. And if we keep moving through this passage, we get this. Alright, so nothing about that really out of the ordinary, this little piece. That is all well within our scale. But here at the um, end, we're going to plug the high A, and then we're going to move into our next passing tone, which is here on the eighth fret of the second string. That's a G note. And so G is not in our major pentatonic scale, not for A. So what we're going to do, that's our flat seven. So it really kind of pulls us into the minor, much like this minor third did. But what we're going to do is hit it and then pull off from seven to five. Then we hit another passing tone here. This is the four on the seventh fret of the third string. This is our D. So we've got a passing tone here and there. Then we're going to hammer on from our minor passing tone up to the major third. So this little phrase has quite a bit of passing tones. We've got this one, then this one, that one, and then we're coming back through. These two are in the scale. All right, so let's play this and really listen out for the passing tones and how they color the sound here. One, two, three, four. The third way that you can help add some musical life to your playing if you're sounding too much like you're playing scales is to avoid the root. When we play our scales, when we practice our scales, we typically practice them from root to root. And that's a good thing, but we sound a little bit like this. Which is not what you want to sound like when you're actually playing. So what we can do is avoid playing the root. There's definitely times where you want to play the root and you need to bring out that strong home bass kind of sound, but if you're stuck and you need to add some color to your playing and you want to get out of that scale rut, then try this song for size. Let's have a listen to this next example and then I'll tell you a little bit about it. So what we're doing here in this lick is we're starting out on the third of our scale, this C sharp note, not the root, before we have started on this A note here, but here we're going to really call out this major third sound, and we're going to do it by pulling back off using this passing tone, the minor third, our C note, then back up to our C sharp before launching into the rest of the lick. But here we're going to pull off and really expose that minor third sound. Let that hang as we jump up here to the B note on the first string. And that's how we end this measure. Notice that in previous examples, we've gone to the A note on the first string at this spot in the lick. But here we're going to build a little bit of tension in something interesting by going up to this B note. Then we're going to slide into our root. So we are hitting the root here, but we're not going to hang there. Then we're using our passing tone move to the G. Then we pull off from the F sharp to the E. Then we do this passing tone move on the D. Do the hammer on from the minor third to major third. Pull off from our root down to our flat seven, a passing tone, and then end on our uh, major third here. Two, three, four.
The final tip that I've got for you when it comes to helping your playing sound a little less like scales and a little more like music is to punctuate at the end of a lick. What I mean by that is to put a little something special, a little something outside of the ordinary on that very final note of the phrase. Let's give a listen to this next example, then I'll talk to you a little bit about how we accomplish this punctuation. Okay, so there are a couple things that you can do to really punctuate that final note. One thing you can do is end with some vibrato. So at the end of our lick, we could end like this. Another thing that you can do is a nice little blues bend. And what I'm doing there is I'm bending, but I'm choking out on the top of the bend. And I'm actually not bending very far. I'm actually more thinking about this note going sharp than I am doing a true bend. We want just a nice little microtonal element here, a vocal sound of this thing pushing a little bit sharp. Adds a nice tension at the very end of a phrase like this. And the other thing that I'm doing is I'm choking this thing out once I get to the top of my bend, okay? So you don't want this thing to go too sharp because it's gonna sound bad or off and you certainly don't wanna end your licks that way. But if you, if you nail it, if you get it right, this can be a very bluesy sound. All right, did you find one of these four tips helpful? If so, let me know in the comments below which one stood out to you, which one are you gonna use in your playing right now. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this lesson and I hope that you really learned something. If you did, give us a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. If you'd like to start building a solid foundation in the blues, then check out the Acoustic Blues Jumpstart. There's a three pack of lessons that I'm giving away. All you have to do is head over to bluesguitarinstitute.com slash start now and claim your spot. This mini course is full of quick wins and I'm sure you'll be on your way picking up some real cool blues skills right from the get go. And that's what it's all about. So head over to bluesguitarinstitute.com slash start now and get started with your three lesson pack today. That's it for this lesson. Until next time, play on.